Hi everybody, welcome back to Tips for You. Today I want to help you get into an exercise program by making sure that you have the proper shoe on your foot. Nothing will ruin an exercise program quicker than the incorrect sneaker because if you don't have the right cushioning for your foot, your foot takes the shock in an inappropriate way, causing knee pain, foot pain, hip pain, and ultimately you're just going to stop exercising. And I know there's probably a lot of you out there who would love to go running and jogging but start having foot problems and so you just stop. So I wanted to teach you a way that you could figure out what type of foot that you have so that you can buy the appropriate sneaker. Um, I never realized this until a few years ago that sneaker manufacturers design sneakers to fit certain foot types. You can't just kind of go into a store and buy any sneaker and think that it's going to be the right shoe for your foot. It may feel right initially because it's new and it's cushioned and it's better than what you were wearing. But over time, if it's not designed properly for your foot, you will start experiencing pain. Now I am in what's called an underpronator. So when I strike the surface with my foot, I actually roll my foot out and kind of hit the outside of my foot. Sometimes you can look at your sneakers to see where the wear is on your sneakers after you've had them for a while and that will kind of give you an idea of how you're wearing your sneakers out. That's what gave me a clue as to the fact that I was called an underpronator or a supinator. I also have a high arch and for me I need to wear a very cushioned sneaker. I'm a Nike fan. I always wear Nike sneakers and I will always, I won't buy the most expensive, but I won't buy the ones that are the least expensive either. I like to be somewhere, I wear the Nike Air Max Moto 6. Those sneakers are about $95. I get great wear from them, great cushioning. Um, they feel wonderful on my feet. And I'll show you how you can figure that out too for you so you have the right shoe. And it's called the water test. So here we have in my kitchen, I put down a tray of, of like it's a cookie sheet, and I filled it with water, and then you have a brown paper bag. I was looking for just a regular brown paper bag, but I don't know, now they have designs on them. So I'm going to try to, my foot's small, I'm going to try to put it right in that area. Whatever you do, don't fill the tray at your sink and then put it on the ground because you're just going to spill it. Just fill up a pot of water or some type of pitcher and pour it in. And what you're going to do is you're going to stand back, Okay, and you're just going to walk like you're walking into it, and then you're going to step onto the brown paper bag, and I'll show you what we're going to get. Okay, so I'm going to walk now, and here I go. I'm walking. Oh, you know what? Time out. I want to roll my cup up, because obviously that's going to interfere with the whole problem. I meant to do that. Okay, start over. Here we go. Now, I'm walking, and I put my foot in, get it nice and wet, take it out for a second, and I'm going to step on the paper press on it, and walk away. Now, what's left behind is a footprint. Can you see that footprint? That tells you that I see a lot of my arch, and I have a strip here. Now, I'm not an extreme high arch. I am a high arch, but I still have some foot showing. An extreme high arch is if it's like a very skinny little piece here. But I'm certainly not an overpronator. And let me show you, I have a little drawing that I have. So when you do your wet test onto your brown paper bag, you're going to get either a normal foot, which is similar to mine. You have a neutral gait if you have a normal foot, but I'm a little on the higher side, but not as high as that. Or you're going to have a flat foot where most of your arch is it hits the surface of the ground and that causes this type of foot. It's called a flat foot. Or you're going to be someone with a high arch. Someone with a high arch is, is, or someone with a normal arch is a neutral, has a neutral gait, is a, it can be a neutral type foot, or it can be an underpronator foot. You need a, a cushioned sneaker. Someone with a flat um, footprint like this, that has a flat arch is going to be an overpronator and you're going to need more of a stability shoe. So how do we know what kind of shoe to buy? Well that's the difficult question. But I can make it easier for you. 
I buy my sneakers, and here's my sneaker. This is the Nike Air Max Moto that I wear, and I love it. Um, I buy my sneakers from East Bay, which is a sports catalog company. They also are online, eastbay.com. They're great, and I have to buy them there because I also have a wide foot. So when you have a wide foot, it's very hard to find wide sizes and bobs or, you know, in sports authority. Um, they only really carry the, the average medium width. But if I don't have a wide width uh, shoe, my little toe is, everything's going to bother me. And the way you know that is when you step flat on the sneaker, you should have none of your foot hanging over the rim of the sneaker. You should be well on the flat bottom of the sneaker. So, if you go and turn to their running shoe section, they actually list out all of the sneakers by all manufacturers that they carry, most of the, the better shoes uh, in their categories. So, this is for the, for the cushioned shoe like I wear, which is the underpronator and is a person who has a neutral gait. This will, these sneakers, which mine is one of them, um, would be perfect for it. And it tells you right here. Um, if you can see half of your arch of the footprint, or if you have a high arch, you're a supinator, you need a cushioned shoe to prevent leg pain. Someone who is like myself is very prone to getting shin splints, so I have to guard against that because I love to run, and I'll do several miles when I'm out there, so I'll need to make sure, and I do a lot of walking. So with the wrong shoe, I'm in trouble. Then they also have a nice big listing of the stability shoes for those of you that are low arch people or over pronate and then you can pick and take a look at what they have. Now you don't have to order them from East Bay. You can just get a feel for the sneakers that are sold, the names of the sneakers and you can go out and shop and buy what you need elsewhere if it's cheaper or look for sales or you can order from East Bay yourself, whatever you prefer. It's hard to buy sneakers um, online unless you already know what you wear. So I had to do a little trial and error, but once I know, I'll order three or four pairs, then I'm set for the next year and a half, because I'll have to rotate out of them as soon as they start wearing. I'll feel it immediately, my feet will start aching, the balls of my feet on the bottom, I'll start to have a little pain, and I'll say, oh, they're worn out, there's no more cushioning for me. And I like to keep a separate pair for the gym and a separate pair for my outdoor activities. Um, that's what I do, but you know, it depends on how much you use them because my indoor ones won't wear out as fast and then I'll just keep using my, my outdoor ones. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope that will help you stay in shape. Um, the proper shoe is everything when it comes to exercise and protecting your feet and your joints uh, and your knees especially because injuries, you don't want to get injuries. They will All they will do is slow you down and prevent you from, from achieve, achieving your goals. So. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll subscribe because I have a lot more to come. Interesting subjects, helpful tips um, to help you have a better quality life. Thanks again. Bye now.